Welcome to Storytime with Grammy Field. How are you today? Today's book is a little bit longer than some of the other stories I read, so it's more for a little bit older child, not your elementary preschool, but a little bit older. It's a book called Fairies, and it's written by Patricia Saxton. So sit back and enjoy. Okay, so here we have a definition of a fairy. A tiny being in human form, clever, playful, and possessing magical powers, guardian of nature, with a soft spot for children, animals, and chocolate. No wonder I like fairies. Um, cinnamon, synonyms are brownie, they're sometimes called brownie, sometimes pixie, and sometimes sprite. Fairy is the most common name. A good fairy helped your flowers grow tall, a mischievous fairy hid my shoes. A brownie, brownie is known for its good nature and generally appears at night to do household tasks. Perhaps the brownies will come and tidy the kitchen tonight. I would like that. Perhaps the brownies will, um, Sprite suggests a fairy with a pleasing childlike appearance admired for lightness of movement. She is agile as a little sprite. Pixies are especially cheerful and impish. I do believe a pixie has legs. So in fairyland, fairies live in what's often called fairyland, a place that some people think is imaginary. But of course, it isn't imaginary at all. It's really quite real. You see, there's our world, the one where we eat breakfast and go to school and play basketball. And then there's the magical world where fairies live. The two worlds are only separated by a hidden veil, a kind of invisible door that may look like a patch of fog or a flicker of light. So if you dare to believe and step through that invisible veil, you will find yourself in an entirely new place alive with mystical creatures, fairy dust, and magic. Finding fairies. Fairies live and play all around us. They're in our gardens, in our woods, and sometimes even in our homes. They're beside us all the time, right in front of our eyes, even though we may not see them. Children can see fairies quite easily, perhaps because, like fairies, they themselves are open-hearted and their heads aren't filled with grown-up nonsense that keeps them from seeing what's really there. That's why when a baby giggles and smiles and there's no one around, chances are they're looking at a fairy. Peter Pan has said, I do believe in fairies. I do, I do. I do believe in fairies. I do, I do. That was from Peter Pan. When the subject of fairies comes up in conversation, there are some adults who will say things like, don't fill your head with such silliness, or isn't that cute? He thinks there really are fairies. But don't be fooled by their remarks. They're ju they've just forgotten, the poor things. One of the best ways to find fairies is to go to their favorite places, the edge of a stream, in the hollow of an old tree, or in their number one hide-and-seek spot, the flower garden. Just remember to be very quiet so you don't frighten them away. If you're lucky, a tiny fairy face may peer up at you from inside a flower. Since most fairies move very quickly, it can happen in a blink of an eye. You might catch a glimpse of a leg or wing hiding behind a mushroom, resting on a tree branch, or even sitting on a shelf near your favorite book. And if you're reading a really good bedtime story, a fairy just might sit on your pillow to have a listen. Now here are some famous fairies. One is Tinkerbell. Do you know where Tinkerbell's from? 
if you correct, if you um, said Peter Pan, it's correct. It's Peter Pan's friend in Never Never Land, known to be spirited, precocious, and naughty. Sugar Plum Fairy, a hard worker and rarely seen, best known for her starring in The Nutcracker. Tatiana, Queen of the Fairies, Oberon's wife. Oberon, the Fairy King, Tatiana's husband. Puck, Shakespeare's most mischievous fairy, also known as Robin Goodfellow. The Tooth Fairy, how many people know about the Tooth Fairy? The Guardian of Children's Teeth. Fairy Godmother, although made famous by Cinderella, she is really a guardian angel, and everyone has one. Cottingley Fairies. Around 1920, the highly respected author, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, was convinced that photographs of fairies taken by two young English girls were real. When the girls reached old age, they finally admitted that the pictures were faked, but they held true to their belief that they had indeed seen fairies. Flora, Fauna, and Meriwether, the three good fairies in Sleeping Beauty. And Maleficent, the evil fairy in Sleeping Beauty. Sometimes, especially in the evening, fairies look like tiny glowing lights or small shiny balls floating in the air. On a hot June night, you could easily mistake their sparkling light for a firefly. Fairies are also great shapes shifters. They can take on the form of any animal or plant. But in their natural state, when they're not hiding from enemies, they appear to be tiny, human-like creatures, usually with wings. Just living is not enough, said the butterfly fairy. One must have sunshine, freedom, and a little flower. And that's from Hans Christian Andersen in the story, The Butterfly. If you have a garden where you live, fairies might be right outside your own door. A sure sign of the fairies being around is a garden that's colorful, happy, and beautiful. Most of the time, though, you'll hear a fairy before you see one. A whisper, a giggle, the faint sound of chattering, or the tinkling of bells. You might also hear a whoosh and a fluttering of wings and think it's a bird. Now, there's no guarantee that if you look for a fairy, you'll find one. You could search high and low in your flower patch, explore every nook and cranny in the woods, and scour the stream banks, hoping like mad to spot some wee folk and never see a single one. But then again, you might. Remember that not seeing a fairy doesn't mean they're not there, so don't feel badly if you don't see one. What fairies do? Fairies are naturally generous and don't mind sharing the credit with anyone who puts love and care into their gardens. A job that fairies take very seriously is their role as nature's caretakers. They paint delicate designs on butterflies and change the color of autumn leaves. They help lost animals find their way, fix broken wings, and carry fallen baby birds back to their nests. When a new fawn is born, they sprinkle it with fairy dust so its white spots appear. After it rains, they paint rainbows in the sky. If a garden is unusually thick and luscious, loaded with dazzling flowers that bloom the brightest purples, the reddest reds, and the yellowest yellows, you can be sure it's not just because of some fancy new fertilizer, but from a good dose of fairy dust. The garden's human caretaker, some si sometimes said to have a green thumb, probably wouldn't know he'd been secretly helped by a fairy.
I'm going to have to look for some fairies out in my garden this year. Now, if you happen to make friends with a fairy or two, here's what they might do for you. Sometimes they'll tap on your window in the middle of the night and wake you because they want you to see how beautifully the stars are twinkling. Then they'll sprinkle you with fairy dust so you'll go right back to sleep. And in the morning, you'll probably think it was all a dream. Fairies can also help you find things, like your lost blue socks or some coins that might have slipped under a chair cushion or that homework you just couldn't find. Hand in hand with fairy grace, Will we sing and bless this place? That's from A Midsummer's Night's Dream with, from William Shakespeare. Here's a play. He says, signs that fairies might be near. Uncontrollable giggles for no reason. Very lush gardens and healthy house plants. Flowers that bloom bigger and longer. Pets chasing something invisible. Tiny colored lights or tiny white lights. Small glowing globes in the air. Feeling a tickle on your arm, tummy, or neck. Mushrooms growing in a full circle. Sound of chimes or a tinkling bell. Great new ideas come to mind. Now keep in mind though, fairies can be a little bit mischievous. They'll switch your lights off and on, hide your TV remote, or start your dog barking. And just like you, they love chocolate. So they'll be tempted to nibble a bit of yours. Yet for every stolen treat, they'll repay you by leaving a small treasure by your door. Like acorns, pine cones, and polished stones, or a tiny bunch of wild flowers. Except for the tooth fairy, they generally don't give away money, but they do give away smiles and laughter and extra dashes of courage just when you need it. Um, Through the Looking Glass by Lewis Carroll, it says, well, now that we have seen each other, said the unicorn, if you believe in me, I'll believe in you. And here's the unicorn with the fairy on his head. Now, fairy communities. Fairyland is made of four communities of magical beings whose powers come from the elements of earth, air, water, and fire. Established long, long ago, these communities depend on each other and work together in a spirit of friendly cooperation. But that's not to say there isn't the occasional disagreement. To help keep order, a fairy king and a fairy queen reign over each community. The king and queen act as a team to set the rules, keep up with planetary changes, and when needed, settle clashes between elements. Now those elements that they talked of, the earth, air, water, and fire, those are all natural elements that we have all around the earth. Here's something that says, nothing can be truer than fairy wisdom. It is as true as sunbeams. Douglas William Gerald wrote in Specimen of Gerald's Wit. Okay, earth fairies. Because we human beings are earthbound, Earth fairies are the ones we know best. They exist in many different forms and have many different names, like pixies, elves, trolls, leprechauns, and unicorns, to name a few. But of all the earth fairies, flower fairies are around us the most. Flower fairies are the ones skipping through the ivy or tending your vegetable patch. Yet they can be awfully hard to spot they make their clothing from leaves and colorful flower petals, so they blend right into the gardens where they play. They also like to disguise themselves as butterflies or dragonflies, which is why you might miss them if you don't look really closely. Whatever is love and loyalty, 
great purposes and lofty souls, even though in a hovel or a mine there is fairyland. That's Charles Kingsley of Westford Hall. Art fairies are known to whisper inspirational secrets in the wind to artists, writers, and musicians. Hmm. Air fairies are part of the wind itself. Glowing silver, purple, or blue beneath their large slender wings. Some are as small as your hand and love tumbling around with falling leaves on an autumn day. Sometimes they'll slip inside your home to bask in the steam rising from a cup of hot chocolate or spread the smell of fresh baked cookies throughout your house. Others are very tall, two or three times your size. From high in the sky, their great fanny wings send cool breezes down to earth on a too hot summer's day. They also spread seeds, keep migrating birds on their path, and fill the air with the sweet sound of wind chimes. The fairy poet takes a sheet of moonbeam, silver white, his inky dew from daisies sweet, his pen a point of light. Joyce Kilmer in the Fairyland. Water fairies. Water fairies conjure up ripples in quiet streams and great frosty waves in the sea. They live wherever there is water, in lakes, rivers, creeks, waterfalls, marshlands, and oceans. You can find them under lily pads, hiding in seashells, dancing in water fountains. You can even find them in the rain. Like mermaids, Water fairies have especially beautiful voices, and their songs have been said to cast magical spells. If you're not feeling well, their strong healing powers can help you feel better, and their sweet, soothing voices can lull you to sleep. What fairies most love? Lush, lush wild gardens, animals. They love children. Bright, shiny, glittery things sweet treats, sunshine, laughter, practical jokes, playing, little houses made of sticks and mud and leaves with lots of windows and floors, art, music, and dancing bubbles. I like fairies. What about you? Now the fire fairies. If you watch carefully, you can see fire fairies dancing in the flames of a campfire. They, they're tiny bright sparks rising up into the summer night. But beware, their tempers burn hot. If you try to trap them in a jar, their anger can flare up and burn you. The most courageous and powerful fairies in fairyland, fire fairies can cause lightning to strike make volcanoes erupt, and even cause solar eclipses. In ancient times, they supplied fire for fire-breathing dragons, enabling them to toast their enemies like marshmallows. Fairy Secrets Fairy dust is a fairy's number one favorite tool. No one knows exactly how fairy dust is made, except that it's hand ground from the purest and freshest ingredients. What is certain is that each batch is custom made for a particular job at hand. So, for example, mending a broken feather would require a much simpler recipe than one for mending a broken heart. Some facts about fairies. Fairies are ageless, timeless, and immoral. Mortal. Fairies have superhuman strength. They don't need magic wands. Their tears can turn twigs to stone. Fairies weigh practically nothing, and fairies work with angels. Fairies can stop or speed up time, and fairies love to ride horses. 
Let's see, there's some fairy dust. Here's the secret ingredients to fairy dust number three, it says. Sliver of bark from an old oak tree. Three le leaves from a willow tree. One teaspoon pine cone shavings. Handful of peppermint. Handful of parsley. Pinch of ground black pepper. Several blue grape seeds. Two drops of lemon juice. Three teaspoons of thyme. One teaspoon of nut nutmeg. Smidgen crushed sunflower seeds. One large sprinkle of dried red clay. Two large sprinkles of pure white sand. One spot from a ladybug. How do you get a spot from a ladybug? One piece of dragon's tooth. Two ounces of dewdrop or three ounces of fog. Five petals from a red rose. Two tablespoons of crushed clear quartz. Half a teaspoon of green tea leaves. Half a cup of buttercup nectar. One willing chipmunk's whisker. <laughs> I'd like to see the chipmunk who will give him your whisker. Mix to a fine powder and spread with good intention. So I don't know what that one is used for. What fairies dislike most? They don't like litter. So pick up your messes. They don't like bullying. I don't like bullying either. They don't like selfishness. They don't like sad plants. They don't like cold iron. And they don't like those who are cruel to animals. And from the book of Peter Pan, you see, Wendy, when the first baby laughed for the first time, its laugh broke into a thousand pieces, and they all went skipping about, and that was the beginning of fairies. And now, when every new baby is born, its first laugh becomes a fairy. So, there ought to be one fairy for every boy and girl. <laughs> fairy language. Fairies can understand every language spoken on the land or sea and can speak easily with all creatures, even you and me. Of course, they do have their own language, which they speak fluently from the day they are born. People find it nearly impossible to learn, but still, you can try. Here are a few words you'll want to know in case you meet a fairy. Aguk means hello. Plumptum means goodbye. Lanlan means please. Shiame means thank you. Ah, means yes. Yuck, yuck means no. Fairy medicine. If you've ever had a bad case of the giggles, have you ever had that? I have. The kind you get for no reason at all and just can't seem to stop? There may be a fairy whispering in your ear. <laughs> Laughter is good for the soul and fairies know just when you need some cheering up. Well, that explains those giggly moments I get. With just a sprinkling of fairy dust, a fairy can make a scrape or a cut heal faster or turn a bad mood into laughter. With their magical light, Fairies can erase worries and fears. When you're feeling restless, their soft and beautiful singing can help you sleep. But most of the time, fairies won't use these powers unless asked. And since most people are proud, they simply won't ask a fairy to help. There are rumors that fairies sometimes lure humans back to fairyland, where people can spend several years and think it was only a day or two. Do you think that's possible? You should never disturb a circle of mushrooms. These are called fairy rings and are very special. Places where fairies sing and dance and cast their magical spells. In their day-to-day -day lives, Fairies are shy and reserved. 
But if you listen carefully on the first day of spring, summer, fall, and winter, you can hear the lively sounds of fairy merrymaking. On those special days, in the wee hours of the morning, before the moon disappears and the sun rises, fairies the world over spend their time singing, dancing, clapping, and laughing. If you're lucky enough to discover their secret party spot, you'll find a small circle of warm, flattened grass where the fairies sang and danced until the sun came up. How to please a fairy, meaning how do you make a fairy happy? Who doesn't like a present now and then? Well, fairies are no exception. They'll be tickled pink with peppermints or tiny bits of fruit or chocolate and maybe a bright shiny penny. Sweet treats and glittery things are always fairy favorites. And because fairies like to sew, Buttons, sequences, and scraps of fabric also make great gifts. Colorful threads are nice too. And just a little bit is fine as fairies can magically turn it into as much as they need. If you're feeling artistic, find some paper and draw your own fairies. Fairies adore the attention, so your drawings will surely please them. You can also read to them out loud, but not too loud, or sing a favorite song. Fairies just love a good story and will sing along at the drop of a note. But if you really want to please a fairy, you must promise to be kind to all living things, trees and plants, animals, river, oceans, and other people. Treat them all with courtesy and respect and like fairies, be nature's good caretakers. So here's the fairy creed. As a lifetime guardian of nature, I, put your name in there, swear to honor and respect every li living thing at all times. In particular, the following plant things shall be especially revered. Ash, elder, hawthorn, oak, and willow trees, apple blossoms, bluebells, buttercups, cloves, daffodils, elderberry, foxglove, heather, lavender, lilac, lilac, holly, milkweed, pansies, peony, oh, what was that one? poppies, primrose, and thyme. Furthermore, all unicorns under our care are all, they have funny writing in this book. Furthermore, all something under our care will, and it doesn't, it goes on, but it doesn't have any more words after that, so. Lots of flowers to take care of, huh? So that's the end of the story. Um, that's kind of interesting. How many of you like fairies? I kind of like them. I like the creative ones, and I like how they like the, um, nature and stuff like that. Well, I hope you enjoyed this book about fairies, and I hope you come and join me again at Storytime with Granny Theo. Be sure to subscribe to the Facebook page as well as the YouTube channel. Thank you.